welcome. You're watching Head to Head. I'm Antonina Antosha with UATV. On April 9, 2015, the Ukrainian parliament adopted the laws on decommunization. According to them, more than 52,000 placements have been changed in the country over four years. More than 300 historical names were restored. To discuss other results of the decomm decommunization in Ukraine, we well, welcome to the studio today Sergei Rabenko. He is the expert of the Institute of National Remembrance. Hello and thank you for coming. Hello. So first of all, I would like to ask you if it would be fair uh, to think and to actually claim and state that the process of actual decommunization in Ukraine started on Euromaidan when uh, the monument to um, Vladimir Lenin was demolished on one of the main squares of Ukraine's capital in, in the year 2014. Would it be fair? Uh, not exactly, okay. uh, because uh, during the period of Euro Euromaidan, uh, it would be uh, rather uh, to say that uh, this was the second stage of the process of decommunization, because the first stage of this process started uh, at the beginning of 1990s. It was not the organized process, it was uh, some kind of uh, local processes in uh, different uh, cities and uh, small towns of the western Ukraine where uh, the monuments of Vladimir Lenin uh, were also removed uh, from the squares, from the street. But it was not the organized process. And uh, during the period of Euromaidan and exactly after that uh, period, uh, in the year 2014-2015, uh, we should say that it was uh, the beginning of the second stage, when this process was uh, made uh, much more in much more organized form and uh, this form uh, uh, this form uh, was uh, clearly uh, set up by the Ukrainian parliament when in the year 2015 uh, the Verkhovna Rada adopted the uh, four laws on decommunization. Let's talk about the second stage of the decommunization, the one you've just described that started in 2014. Uh, clearly it was much faster and much more effective than the first stage that started in 1990. Which results could we be uh, possibly absolutely proud of during the second stage of decommunization? So, uh, while speaking about the process of decommunization, uh, we should divide it into uh, two results. Uh, first result is uh, the result when we uh, clearly uh, removed uh, so, uh, the monuments of the uh, Lenin and other uh, Soviet leaders from mm. our streets and we renamed uh, the names of our cities, of our towns, of our uh, regions, of uh, the uh, streets, uh, squares and uh, other uh, points of uh, local uh, toponyms uh, from uh, the map of Ukraine. It was So in total it was 50,000 placements, 52,000 50, placements? Yes, okay. uh, nearly more than 52,000 uh, of uh, such places. Uh, when, while we're speaking about the uh, names of the towns and of the cities, uh, it uh, should be uh, nearly 1,000. And okay. uh, if we are speaking about the districts, uh, we should say that uh, 26 of such districts were renamed by the decision of the Ukrainian parliament. Comparing this number that um, that we have during the second stage of decommunization to the number that we had in the first stage of decommunization, wh which, wh what was the result of the first stage of decommunization? How many uh, names historical names were restored and how many names of the places have been changed during the first stage? Oh, it is a very interesting and difficult question because uh, during this first stage of decommunization there were no, uh, no statistics uh, on the uh, names that were removed or uh, renamed uh, during that period and exactly uh, on the uh, number of such monuments of Lenin and other uh, Soviet leaders that were also removed from uh, our cities. We should say that at the beginning of uh, 19. Uh, 90s uh, on the territory of Ukraine we had more than 500 and 5000 monument uh, monuments of Lenin uh, mm -hmm. these uh, were uh, maybe uh, the most uh, number of such monuments on the territory of the Soviet Union more uh, than uh, we had uh, in Ukraine uh, there were uh, such monuments only on the territory of the Russian Federation but the territory of Russian Federation is uh, much uh, bigger than the territory of Ukraine so comparing uh, these uh, numbers, we should say that uh, the territory of Ukraine uh, at the beginning of 1990s was maybe one of the uh, most Leninized uh, territory, uh, part of the uh, territory of the former <laughs> Soviet Union. 
So uh, at the beginning of 2014-2015, uh, um, if I if I'm not mistaken, uh, more than uh, 1,500 of such monuments only of Lenin were removed uh, during this uh, first uh, stage of decommunization, and uh, most of uh, these monuments were situated on the cities and on the towns of the western Ukraine. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so most of them uh, were removed during that uh, first stage. If we are speaking about the other regions of Ukraine, the eastern Ukraine, the southern uh, part of Ukraine the central Ukraine. Uh, so uh, these processes uh, were uh, not uh, organized process during the uh, first stage of decommunization. These were some local initiatives, uh, some local uh, decisions of the uh, of the um, of the people who uh, lived in this uh, town and the decisions of uh, their uh, local community branches. So only on uh, the beginning of this uh, second stage, when the uh, Ukrainian state, uh, the Ukrainian parliament adopted the uh, laws on decommunization and uh, made a clear procedure on uh, what monuments should be removed, what names should be uh, changed and what should be the procedure of such removal or such changeable. Uh, so these uh, process were much more organized and they uh, started uh, in uh, the way they started. Uh, in the nearest future, uh, the Ukraine's Dnipropetrovsk region is going to be is going to change its name for Sichislav. So, How soon is it going to happen? Uh, so uh, now we have uh, the two uh, great names of the toponyms of uh, Ukraine. Uh, these are the names of the Dnipropetrovsk and Kirovokrat uh, regions of uh, Ukraine. Mm. As we know, the procedure of the changing of uh, these names is uh, the uh, sh should be made by the Ukrainian Parliament by the adoption of the special laws that change the constitution of Ukraine. Because we know that uh, the names of the regions of Ukraine are set up in the Article uh, 133 of the Constitution of Ukraine. So there should be a much uh, difficult uh, procedure uh, to change them. Uh, we uh, should have the uh, decision of the Constitutional Court of Ukraine. As far as I know, uh, the Constitutional Court uh, has made such a decisions uh, on uh, uh, the law that uh, changes the name of uh, Kirovokrat uh, region to Kropivnitsky region. And also uh, uh, for, uh, on the uh, 2nd of April, there was another decision of the Constitutional Court that also uh, ch that also uh, had uh, such a decision on the law that uh, changes the name of the Dnipropetrovsk Oblast to Sichislav Oblast. Mm -hmm. So the next stage uh, is uh, the uh, decision of the Ukrainian Parliament that uh, should adopt uh, this uh, law first uh, by the uh, majority of the deputies. Mm -hmm. So uh, there should be more than 226 uh, 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 deputies that vote for that law. And on the next uh, session of the Ukrainian parliament, there should be more than uh, 300 uh, deputies that uh, vote for these laws. So after that, uh, this, uh, this question uh, should also be solved by the Ukrainian parliament. In your opinion, why did Ukrainian um, population and why did Ukrainian government and parliament become more active after the, re the revolution of dignity with the decommunization? It wasn't just the attack of the Russia as an aggressor country, right, that we decided to, you know, that the, 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 the top officials of Ukraine decided to get rid of all the um, Soviet Union memorabilia, that was something else. In your opinion, what so, was it? So uh, one of the reasons uh, you have just uh, named, uh, it was the aggression of the Russian Federation, uh, because uh, as far as we remember that um, very many of these uh, Soviet markers, uh, Soviet marks, uh, Soviet names were used uh, by the uh, Russian government, by the people who uh, supported this uh, aggression to uh, show uh, the uh, clear purpose uh, of this uh, aggression. So uh, this uh, changed. Uh, so uh, after that, uh, very many people uh, in Ukraine uh, they uh, changed their uh, point of view on these uh, Soviet marks and on these Soviet names, and they uh, started uh, to look on them not only as the marks of the. Uh, 
some uh, of some of uh, period of our history, but also the marks of this aggression. Mm -hmm. uh, the second point was that uh, these uh, monuments of Lenin's, these uh, Soviet names, were also the markers of the uh, former regime of the president Yanukovych. Uh, and right. uh, during the revolution of dynasty, during the uh, Euromaidan, uh, very many people also uh, started to look on these uh, monuments as the marks of this uh, regime uh, on, and uh, they uh, also changed their uh, point of view on them. Mm -hmm. uh, the third uh, reason was that uh, in the period of 2014-2015 uh, we had uh, two uh, Ukrainian elections. We elected the new president, we also elected the new parliament of Ukraine. Uh, we had, uh, first we had, uh, and uh, first we had uh, the Ukrainian parliament where the Communist Party uh, did not uh, take any place. Uh, they had no deputies now in the Ukrainian parliament and most of the uh, deputies of our parliament were agreed to uh, mm -hmm. adopt such laws and to start this procedure. So maybe these were mm -hmm. the two main reasons reasons uh, why uh, it was uh, done uh, four years uh, before. So we have just um, stated in our conversation that there has been a stage one of decommunization and there has been a stage two. Now, is there going to be a stage three? If it is, what kind of steps are going to be taken during the stage three, three of decommunization? It should be. And uh, maybe this third stage uh, should be uh, the most uh, difficult stages of uh, all stages of decommunization. Because the result of the decommunization is not uh, simply to remove some uh, monuments from our streets or change some uh, names, some marks of these totalitarian regimes from the names of our cities, mm -hmm. of streets and so on and so forth. Uh, the main goal of the decommunization should be uh, the changing of the minds of our uh, citizens. Uh, our citizens should understand uh, clearly what uh, Soviet regime was, how uh, and uh, why uh, this regime committed uh, very, uh, very many crimes, such crimes as, for example, the crime of uh, Holodomor, the Great Famine, the genocide of the Ukrainian people, the war crimes, yeah. the crimes of aggression, the crimes against humanity. Uh, because uh, during the Soviet period we did not speak about these crimes uh, at all. Nowadays we started to speak uh, on them. Nowadays uh, we opened the archives of the former KGB, of the former security services of the uh, Soviet Union. And uh, nowadays uh, the historians, uh, the, not the politicians, the historians, the professionals should uh, tell, uh, should uh, speak with the community, should uh, uh, make uh, their point of view on this crime, should uh, explain how and uh, what for these uh, deeds uh, were committed by the uh, communist regimes. And uh, this uh, third stage, when uh, our citizens uh, change their minds and change their point of view on the Soviet period, it should be uh, maybe the most uh, difficult ch stages uh, of uh, all threes, and it should be uh, the stages that uh, will last uh, not a uh, simple yeah. Well, we're all eagerly looking forward to the stage three of decommunization in Ukraine and let's hope that it will be the most fruitful one of all the process. Thank you so much for coming. Thank here. you. That was Sergei Rabenko. He is the expert of the Institute of National Remembrance. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned with UATV for more.